Welcome to episode 45 of the Offside Show. We are here with the team, Junior, Tama and Eliotta. How are we guys? Good. Good, good, good. good. Uh, big shout out to Fale Kava. Um, and Fale Kava is uh, Tox Fale's uh, product. He's in New Japan uh, at this moment and he's actually bringing a New Japan show here in November. So check that out. That's here at Mangari Art Centre. But Fale Kla- Kava, you can find it at uh, Mangri Town Centre and also in Otahu at the Fale Dojo as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Plus64, uh, Spotify and YouTube and also across every social media platform. Lots to get into, guys. Yo. Get it. And uh, it's been quite the week if you've mm. been a Samoan or a Pacific Islander. Uh, and if you've been under a rock, you pretty much know. But I'm just going to play this audio and we can talk about Hannah's comments and uh, the Breaking Waves uh, Blue TV, Blue Wave uh, podcast. I feel I f- that um, the Samoans in New Zealand need to be humbled mm-hmm. because majorly humbled when it comes to their culture, mm. they're too entitled. You've heard it. We've heard it. It's been going around all week. Tom will look so excited to talk about this. Yeah, happy New Way in Language Week. Guys. Happy New Way yes. in Language Week. Mm. Never forget. Yeah, it's their week, man. Never forget that um, some ones are the best. But um, <laughs> Sad. give the floor away to the Uso Ali because this has been uh, oh. such the, the topic this week amongst uh, our community. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, nah, straight up, I, I don't know how people are so angry, to be honest. I Literally, just somebody has just shared their opinion, which is probably based on their experiences. And that's it. That's their experiences in life. And if that's their opinion, that's their opinion. I can't believe what I've read in like, the responses. I read someone who said it was lateral violence. Like, what the fuck? Like... Do you understand what violence is versus an opinion? It's it's completely different. And you can't compare the two. And just people just, I feel like, like you were saying before, about outrage, like just trying to get angry at something when I don't get it. Like in, in what she said, she, she says not all New Zealand Samoans. Um, she says, uh, I think just like most. Um, you know, like she's using these like, quantifying words like she's not meaning everyone um i just don't get it bro and just a massive overreaction to somebody's opinion and it's not even a massive opinion that's that's just my first take from it it's um yeah it's it's been interesting and uh shout out to hannah uh firstly because mm. if you haven't be, if you've just noticed her from that those two comments that she said she's actually got a wealth of podcasts under her belt and if you actually dig into them like she did this excellent one with Rizvan like I think it was earlier this year mm. where they we deep dived into Tongan culture and 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 Tongan males and and she's got so many others with so many in the Pacific community but they take these two things you know and <laughs> funny thing is she made that comment and then you know on our Instagram page we kind of addressed it as like what she was saying right like it's an opinion. Um, think objectively about it. And then people start deep diving into the bombing stuff. And I was like, wait, wait, but you guys haven't first resolved this first thing. Right. So now you guys are just uh, out outraged and you're trying to find things to attach her to. I, like, c- cancel culture to me doesn't work anymore. Oh, but pathetic. I call this outrage culture. This is what it is. It's yeah. just finding something to be angry about. Absolutely. Um, and I know, like, I know a lot of Afakasis. Firstly, I know a lot of Afakasis are a lot more Samoan than full Samoans. Mm. I'll put it there first. But the ones that are like going overboard with it, like it seems to be like I get that they are hurt by it. I feel like that's more of a them issue that they're kind of dealing with yeah. as far as their identity. And like, listen, my my father Samoan is Kaya. My language is shit. I know right. that. But I know I'm Samoan. And so when the, the comments came out, when, when Hannah recorded that but it went over my head i actually had to look at what she was saying because if we're in the same industry as broadcasters so to Mm. speak um i know the people she's talking about Mm. in my head because i had to separate okay who she's talking about she's talking about gatekeepers who are these gatekeepers these are the samoans that get handpicked 
by the industry, right. and I'm going to put it out there. It's the funders. They always pick the same islanders to create the same content, and they give millions to. Absolutely. And that's where the buck stops. And it happens in every industry. It happens in yes. health. happens in sports. They all pick the islanders. Mm. It happens in politics, bro. Uh, bro, it happens in pageants. You know, <laughs> you, you get a big Balangi sponsor, and they want the girl that, you know, who who can code switch, you know, who has this Balangi image, Balangi name. This shit is real, bro. Like, everything she said. Um, and like you said, you could do, like, hundreds of positive shit. As soon as you get one thing that people disagree with, it's cancelled. You know how pathetic that is? Like, like we were talking about with um, Junior Far and Sunny Bill, like, they could agree on parenting. They could agree on so many things in life. And this one thing they disagree on, people are going to drive a, a wedge between them or, like you said, outrage. And it's it's pathetic. She's got this long um, long list of work that she's done and been very good at a lot of stuff. And then on this particular occasion, some people disagree and it's just got to, oh, well, fuck her, cancel. Um, like they've tried to dig up shit and it's just the biggest overreaction. And I kind of think, yeah, that's what she's talking about. This is that fucking colonizer way of reacting. <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, this is what she's talking about. Like, some of you don't know your fucking culture. Like, you know, in Samoa, I had to learn this as well. So uh, I'm, I'm not the big gatekeeper of Samoan culture. But, you know, whenever you get angry, you get angry and you get upset and you, over, you overreact or just get really tense about something. What is the one word that Samoans always say? On say? On yeah, yeah, so when yeah. I was in Samoa, they would always say that to me on the bus or court. I'd be like, "Fuck," you know, like I'm I'm quick to react, and they just say, "Eliota, on say, on say." They say that all the time, and I used to think it was like, "Be be patient with the person you're angry at," but it actually means be patient with yourself. You know, like control your emotions, yeah. give yourself time to wait, wait, be patient. You know, because. Emotions is a real thing. It's not just a Samoan culture, but Samoans have it in their culture. Shh, just be patient with yourself. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't do anything now. Don't react to it now. Just wait, just wait. Give it time. You know, and there's that uh, Samoan saying where um, the net is knotted at night, but it is untangled in the morning. You know, so you quickly react. You get upset at something at night and you just chill out with that. Like, just give it some time. See it in the morning. See it another time and the light will come through, you know. And I feel like this is it. Like, in our culture, you just chill a bit, you know. You hear an opinion you don't like, give it some time, you know. Be patient with yourself. Emotions are real. Reactions, you know, will be affected by emotions. You don't know what you're going to do. Give it some time. It happens all the time. Give it some time. And there's that one, um, the Matai in Manono. It's on YouTube, I think, and, like, the young ones come in all angry with their staff and, you know, you corrupt, you thief and all of that. Like the worst words, like worse than this. Mm. And these are Matai, you know, and the other, the, out, the older Matai just chills out, okay, and he just hears it out, hears it out. He doesn't suck about it. He, he doesn't say that's violence, yeah. you know. You just listen and you understand. Other people articulate things differently. Maybe they're not as good as articulating their emotions or their ideas as good as you. Give them some time. Let it all out. And then by the end, like he lays the staff, you know how you horizontal. I mean, we leave it at peace. Mm. And, you know, the energy is different. You start solving the issue and solving the problem. And so, like, you can see the quickness to get angry and, you know, and slow. Just no thought of trying to understand. I just want to defend and you see, like, some people clearly have never had anyone disagree with them before <laughs> because they think it's violence. They think somebody with a different opinion is violence. That's lateral violence. Oh, fuck, these woke bullshit terms. Like, oratory is massive in our culture. It's an ancient uh, part of our culture. It's being able to listen to people who, who um, say very strong words, hurtful words, Okay, oratory is not just speaking, it's the ability to listen and to um, be able to give it time, you know, and it's just like, that's exactly what she was talking about. Like, some of you dudes don't fucking know shit. Like, I had to learn that because I didn't know shit. I had to learn that in Samoa, so quick to get angry and shit. And all the locals on the basketball court, 
in the law court. <laughs> like I'm getting told this all the time. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just chill, Ellie. And I kept thinking, because I thought it was about myself. I kept thinking, okay, I got to be patient with that person. My, that yeah. uh, Give them a chance. And I was like, nah, they're telling me to give my emotions a chance, give myself a chance. I'm not trying to understand. I'm just fucking want to bite back. I want to defend. I want to attack. And I feel like this is it because now for us, like we can listen to this and go, mm, yeah, no, nah, it doesn't apply to me yeah, or whatever. Or yeah. we're, we're sweet with how we feel about our um, culture and our identity. Uh, okay, I can hear what she's saying. And, and like you said, it's in your industry. It's in a lot of industries where dudes play the island card in order to get on a board or to get a position. And then when they get in there, they fucking act up to the other white members and don't do shit for Pacific people. That's real what she's saying. Like that part of it is real. Like there's a lot of what she said. There's a lot of truth in what she said, but because others haven't, exper haven't experienced that or haven't seen it, they're fucking outraged. And my outrage trumps everything. You know what I mean? My outrage is the most important. It's like it's pathetic, man. There is an uh, there is a Pacific Island person in Screen Australia right now, uh, who's got a high position that can open doors for Pacific people, but he constantly creates bullshit. And he created a show that um, I think it was called what was it called? It came out a decade ago. Um, it was basically um, it was Police Ten Seven, but in Mount Druitt. Oh, fuck, what was it called? Um, but it was basically a. a, a a show, it was like a live action show that made Mount Shore look like shit. Mm. And this is a Pacific Island running. And you know how proud they are now, a decade later, of, of that community. Um, and he won't step down because he's got a nice six figure job. But you got that across the board. It's not just in Australia. Yeah, bro. Um, you'll, you'll get people that are employed in positions because they took the box. Like I listened that far into a conversation to go, yeah, I get that because right now, I can apply for funding. I won't get it. But if I align myself with this person and kiss their ass and right. do the project their way, then I'll get the funding. And so that is like operable among so many other different um, mm. communities. But for the Afakasis out there, like I know like a lot were hurt. Um, I think where she messed up was just the generalization of it. I, I, I think like she well, could be a bit uh, more specific yeah. about who she was talking about. Well, when I heard Hannah make all the statement, whatever, I felt that there was the key word that she probably didn't bring it across. And I think the key word that she's trying to bring across was total puppy syndrome. So that was the actual key to the whole conversation that she's bringing across. And it's true, like what you're saying, Ellie. What she said is true. You know, everyone had their experiences. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, sometimes when we when we're trying to share our experiences, it's either we've been laughed at, or we're just talking a lot of shit. Mm. You know, so you can't please everyone. And at the end, opinions an opinion, mm. but sometimes it needs to be out there. You know, yeah. out there to create conversation, to realize the the you know this whole discrimination, everything that you know that we see the world. Some people will not be able to see the world, mm. but we def there's a lot of our people behind us that actually see the world but can't say anything. Why? Because the fear of being laughed at. Yeah, mocked and ridiculed you know? and yeah, bullied online like what happened here. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, absolutely. Like, yeah, with the Afakasi stuff, look, I think without all of our experiences, like, we've dealt with some eat ass Afakasi, we've dealt with some eat ass full blooded. Yep. Samoan born shit I ran into all that shit in Samoa and we've also dealt with some Afagasi who are amazing in their far Samoa mm -hmm. like what is a Samoan these days is Samoans are everything now all sorts um, we we're just talking about Rob Dillingham you know half yeah. black half Samoan like we know that like we know there's all of these that's why I don't understand why people got so angry like we know the nuances involved, you know, with being Samoan or what is a Samoan and all of that. And that's why it's cool to just sit back and, okay, that's her opinion. That's cool. You know, like, fuck, I couldn't believe the, the reactions and, and, and the depths and the levels that these people would stoop to just to fucking... Well, I mean, just like the, like, again, 
And I like everyone that I was reading in the comments, I was like, I, like these are really intelligent people. I was like, why are you guys reacting like this? Like, look at it objectively. Step back, look at it objectively. Give yourself some time. You know, be patient with yourself. Let your emotions subside. And like you said, look at it objectively. Like you said, onosai. Onosai. <laughs> and learn that principle. All you woke fucking afakasis who got outraged, learn that principle. That's a real Samoan principle. Born born out of experiences and oratory, born out of seeing people at your at their lowest, when seeing desperate people needing help, you know, onosai. Like, give yourself time to listen to everything. If you worked up over the way somebody has said something, give yourself time. You know, don't be so fucking um, uh, distracted by how someone says something. Not everyone is as good as English as you and can articulate their emotions perfectly. Give, give them some time. Give yourself some time to be able to, okay, they swear a lot or, oh, they're attacking me, but let's get down to the issue. And you know the funniest thing about that when you try and have an objective conversation about what she said, whether you think she's wrong or right, um, the reaction to that was like I found pretty interesting because people started deep diving into her. Mm. So people were sending a video of her and Steve Setu, Steve or, Setu yeah. or another video of hers talking about the bombing, and it's like, wait, wait, we haven't addressed the thing that we, that she was talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely, talk about that because if you don't want to have a conversation about that, then why are you going deeper? If not, go. It's, Deeper into that's the podcast. The, that's well, the maliciousness. I mean, that's malice. Well, well, that's the thing. You put yourself out there to be judged at any any point in time. Um, and you know, people are not going to deal with things in a logical order online because everyone has a different starting point of a, you know for their outrage. So you're going to have people that may not be outraged in regards to what she said about culture and you know whether that be gatekeeping or caretaking of Samoan culture, mm. but then they'll be offended about the bombing. And I think that's a very valid start, like, yep. for people to be outraged about certain different things, and people call it cherry picking. But I think, no, I think, I, I think that's valid though. Like, you, you're going to, you know, if you're going to be outraged, you, you know, you're going to be outraged about things that violate what you personally think has value. What's um, that called? Like, what aboutism, isn't it? Something like that. Or you say, what about this? Or well, what about this? Yeah, so well, it depends on how far you're, you're just going to keep going. So the, the, so this person, say for example, I am if, holier I'm than thou. if I'm outraged at, at the bombing and not at what she said, well then, you know, I've obviously reconciled in my mind in regards to what she said about, you know, being Samoan. But then the whole comparing to bombing thing, maybe I haven't reconciled that in my head and that's where my outrage is. Mm. And I think that's valid for any human for, you know, to be outraged at particular things that don't align but with their values. I don't, I don't think it was that though. I think people were just reaching for something to get angry about. Yeah, and, and that too. Like the, the, the and that's when the, the whole culture of what we have now, mm. right? We have such, it, it rewards, it rewards what, or like a, it rewards short term Wins, short term wins, like like yeah. you know gratification, instant gratification, convenience, like that has spread over into our attention span, the the lack of patience as well, because mm. we're expecting things at the you know, and and now we we're also expecting people to be able to deliver at that level, where, yeah. hey, like you know you've you've got people that have studied PhDs and still don't deliver properly, or may may not deliver at a at a certain level. Or uh, um, deliver in according to how they want it delivered. Yeah, and so when everyone has a, you know, when everyone's at different levels of understanding, yeah, like it's gonna, you're gonna exactly, be, you're gonna be outraged, and that's the problem. Like people are outraged at the at the way Eliota drops the f bomb every now and again, or, oh, no. or more often than, than usual. But then, you know, they they they've seen it enough where they're like, actually, take away the f bombs. Is it objective? Like you said, like yeah. like like. Object, objectively look at it and be like, well, what's the message being being passed across? And then you know, step back and, and be like, well, can I deliver it better? And I think that, that that's, that's my, well, I think that's what she may be going through at the moment is, you know, could I deliver that better? Fine, next time I'll deliver mm. it better. But, yeah, I'm not going to comment on, you know, whether, you know, Afrikasis and things like that. Like, you know, if that's you, you want to talk yeah. about that, then talk about colorism because that, like, like like you you've mentioned earlier, so you know you you got all sorts of different people that do the same things and do the same exploitation, whether that be you know d the the darkest of the dark and the lightest of the light, whether whether you're half this and and quarter that, um, 
you know, if you're a bad person, you're just a bad person. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of what skin you have on the outside. Facts. Like it's, yeah. And the, uh, just the inability to handle a different opinion. Mm. It's pathetic. Like she came out with a different opinion and people lost their shit. Like people are stuck in their echo chamber so much. They're so used to being surrounded by like minds and people who say the same shit. The minute somebody comes with a different opinion, they lose their fucking shit. Well, see, that's the that's the curse of the algorithm, right? Exactly, being, being, and that's like, part of what you're saying. You. And and that's it. It's not just a short attention spans. It's just like you keep getting delivered the things you like, and then you think that everybody has to think that way. And get used to fucking Samoans, bro. Samoans do not think the same. It's in our culture, like. People have got it wrong. We think, oh, we're collective. We must all think the same. Actually, actually, you go live in Samoa and it's pro-individual rights. The village and everybody will consider what the different person says or the weak person or they try to change everything to accommodate everyone. Okay, it's not like, nah, majority rules. That's not how it goes. Like Samoans in Samoa are very good at listening to different opinions. It's part of the culture. And just to see the outrage over a fucking... It wasn't, it wasn't even that bad from my perspective. And someone's going to go, yeah, well, you're not off Gussie. Well, fuck. I think... I mean, isn't that the challenge of every immigrant or child of an immigrant living overseas? As in she the, also the whole, said New Zealand-born Samoan guys, okay? Well, well, that's the thing. Like <laughs> my those, sister's uh, a New Zealand-born. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing <laughs> those that are removed from the motherland. Um, isn't that the challenge, though? Like, like constantly, like, these, these trigger words... Um, because you know identity is the same conversation that's every that's a single personal year. Journey for everyone. Yeah, and so you know it, it's gonna deal with your shit then. Yeah. Like that's if that's what upsets you, fucking Hannah is not the one to fucking solve your identity crisis. Yeah. Like you know, you, if you clearly if you're offended by this and you got some shit to deal with, go deal with it. Fuck, you can't blame her. Shit. And that like that that whole take on that right, like the. See, even for NZ born Samoans, the whole the dynamic or the dilemma there for a lot of us was the your plastic Samoan. Like me and my siblings have dealt with that our whole lives. But it's like I'm I'm comfortable with my skin enough to jump on a plane right now, go to Samoa, go to my my dad's village where he grew up, walk inside their house, go to the fridge, sit down and chill, and no one will bother me. Actually, they will welcome me. Because we're there. Like we're there for every fight. I love it. We love it. We're present. We're in the community, even if it's like from here, like we've talked about this on this podcast, how how many times about how you can service the island, even without being there. Like you've talked about many ways. Like mm. I try the best to do it with the work that I do, with, with some of the content that I create, even though it doesn't directly go. Everything I do is mostly Pacific Samoan. So same with all of us. So there are ways you can do that. I don't think the way is sitting around and arguing <laughs> or jumping no. online and making memes have fun with it because we've had like I, well I've had fun with it but that's all I see it as like if you're if you're too precious about like that surface level message then you're totally missing the thing that's underneath it yeah and you're not gonna fucking do much because you're you're too busy getting angry at fucking small shit you know like sometimes you just gotta accept where you're at and that's okay if you feel like you're plastic accept that plastic yeah if you feel like, oh man, my language is bad, my culture is bad, well, fucking own it. If you want to do something about it, do something about it. If you don't, that's cool, but own it. You can't blame Hannah for it. Own your shit. It's all right. And you go to some, oh, they, they, they treat me like I'm a bilingual. Oh, well, fuck. Do something about it. And shit. I don't even think that's the case. Like, you've said this before, but I've even, even noticed it for myself. If you actually integrate yourself in the culture, they'll throw a few jokes at you, but they will welcome you in. Bro. They look forward to, to hanging out with you and teaching you stuff. And that's what she was going up about, about entitlement. You know, when you go and you throw yourself in a culture, you just got to humble yourself, yeah. man. If you want to learn, you got to fucking acknowledge, man, I don't know shit. And I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn about this. I'm here to get told what to do. I'm here to get laughed at. That's the journey of your identity. If you don't have it and you want it, you'll have to go through that part where you're going to be ridiculed by your own family and you're going to be in a, a position of powerlessness. You know, you can't just, and this is what she's talking about. You can't just say, I am Samoan and that's it. I'm fine. That's cool. Accept that. But if you want to learn and, and if you want 
to not be mocked in Samoa. If you want to be accepted and not be laughed at because you can't speak Samoan and you don't know any of the cultural practices, then you have to put yourself in a position of powerlessness, in a weak position, and fucking shut up and serve. And that's what she's talking about. There's no entitlement if you want to go on that journey of finding your identity, of learning your cultural practices, learning your language. It starts at a, at a powerless position. It starts at a position where you're fucking humble. You know nothing and you have to accept that I'm in a weak position. You, you have to accept whatever comes with that. And then you'll learn and you will feel so much more rewarded once you can do all of it. Once you can sit in the funnel and everyone knows that you've been there serving for the last year or two or whatever. Like, and this is it. I think this is the entitlement thing she was uh, talking about. Like, that's where the journey is. And that's the reality of it. You can't, oh, I want to start in a position of power. Nah, I'm sorry. If you really want to go on that journey of finding your identity, knowing your language, knowing what to do in the funnel, knowing how to be a proper matai, it's going to start in a position of weakness. I want to start at Tomasina Island Resort with yeah, selfies. You, you can't, this bro. this is the funding money I got to yeah. stay here, that but I won't stay in the village. And that's what I think <laughs> she was getting to. And yeah, she probably got the words wrong on that. You know, and I don't expect every young person to get it right. As a matter of fact, I expect young people to always get it wrong. And then there will be some older people, mature people who say, no, 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 this is how we talk or this is how we react. This is how we listen, you know. And I'll never forget Luai at fucking Brian Tuttle's wedding, swearing, worse words, curse words, all of that. And still Brian Tuttle had the forgiveness to, you know, I'm not going to disown him. I'm not going to react and fucking put a meme of him and humiliate him online. Like, he had the patience, and we all know his heart's in the right place. You know, we can he can learn all of that stuff. And I feel like what she said, her heart's in the right place. She clearly is talking about monotanga, um, doing some service to your village and all of that. You know, so she's she's got her heart in the right place, probably went around and could have chosen better words. But I, it's just a young person. These are things in life. And we need to encourage young people to speak more, okay? And bullying them with your woke-ass fucking terminology of lateral <laughs> violence, <laughs> fuck, that is not going to encourage our young Samoans who, who have a strong Samoan accent, who, who can barely speak English, that's not going to encourage our young Samoans and Samoa to speak more, okay? So what's your reactions? That's why there's... There's ways in our culture on how to listen, on how to let people get their point across without you judging how it's said and being able to try to understand and look at what they said and address the issue. And But because we're all so into this fucking cancel culture, this quick reaction culture, this outrage culture like you talk about, quick to do memes and quick, quick to be bilangis. And again, this is what she's talking about. You know, maybe some of you need to go to the village and rah, rah. yeah. I had to go and learn that shit. I was quick to re I was quick to react all of that. I had to learn patience as well. Patience with myself, learn about emotions and all of that. It's all in our culture. There's so many brilliant things in our culture. There. They've already got it in place. And it and good on her for saying this shit, because it brings everything out. And maybe good on those for you, uh, those of you reacting, because some of your reactions are shit. I saw the <laughs> spinoff; they titled something on some uh, new new way in language week. Some ones are fighting over themselves, right? And so that article had the opportunity to put something about new air. didn't. They okay, so why the fuck open like that? Like, gosh, and then mock her following. Oh, she's just got a, a small following with a couple of uh, comments. You know, yeah. the quantity of followers does not affect the quality of the statement, of the opinion shared. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. Everyone in Samoa has a voice. You know, they listen to children. They listen to children's opinions. They listen to the elderly opinions. Everybody has a right to be heard. And everybody is listened to in our culture. It is not majority rules. It's not powerful rules. And it's not everyone must articulate themselves perfectly in English. Otherwise, we'll cancel you. You fucking woke shits. <laughs> Seriously. 
Like, leave all your awesome English, the diaspora and lateral movements and all of that nuances. <laughs> Gosh. I think the thing is with, um, with hot takes, right, you know, expecting to deliver it within 60 seconds, right? Like what she said, there's like maybe five or six different things intersecting. There was. There were so and many then, things intersecting thing, in what like she the, said. So you warrant a 10, uh, sorry, you, you warrant a, a 60 second or 90 second hot take, right? <laughs> you're going to get hot She's just back. sharing what yeah, she you, you, you feels. Know. It's not a hot take. You know, and, and people in Samoa will make that opinion, will share something like that about uh, foreign I mean, Samoans no, as well. It was labeled as a, as a hot take. For and that's it. Own. It's other people judging it. But. I just think the overreaction is quite funny because a lot of my Facebook friends are locals, are locals from Samoa, and they're like, it ain't me. <laughs> you know, it ain't us. Like and then the other half is like, bro, why is everyone angry? Like, yeah. which part? Like, we understand what she said, some Afakasi, some New Zealand Samoans. Like, so what, what are we angry about? Because some of that shit is real. Some and of what I'm she said real is real. Samoan. Yeah, yeah you but know? I want to hear my voice. What about me? Like, oh, fuck. Like, she just shared her opinion. That's speaking okay. On, speaking on, like, the algorithms and, and that, like, because of the content we make, like, I see a lot of what they produce. And the content that they've previously re released isn't divisive. I don't find her to be a divisive person no. that uses takes to get attention. No. Um, if you actually look into a lot of it, like, like, again, like some of the podcasts, she did a great one with Western Guide, with heaps of Pacific people that are doing great things. There was a... Um, did you see that technology, that the Pacific Technology Company that they publicly came out and they cancelled because I think they were sponsoring or something. Oh, but they detached yes. themselves. They detached themselves away from Hannah and her statements. Yes. And I'm just like, have you guys not thought this through? Like, <sighs> are you guys reacting to the comments or the people bashing her? And that's it. Like, we want to side with the majority here. Mm. You know, we want to be on the side of the most people. And fuck that, man. That, that was so bad. Can you take down our video? You know, I mean, from a branding perspective, like I get it. Negativity attracts negativity, and like, yeah, I know. Think objectively, but purely from a, a company and branding perspective, you do want to separate yourself from further from further PR damage because no. bad PR sticks, like it does. Um, and you know, unfortunately, you're going to be guilty by association. But you've talked about like the quickness of how our social media works, right? And she's even kind of referred to this in her bombing statement mm. in that a couple of weeks from now, people will forget about this. Yeah, people, will forget. People, people will forget, but that, that's the thing. Like, um, the, the memory's still there. Like, like, that's the thing, and, and things will trigger those memories to, to be brought up again. For example, like what you said in 2011, Eluata. Like, people still refer to it. Like just time and time again, like you'll see the comments. Oh, this is the guy that referred but to blah blah blah. I don't blah. think she's, she'll be known um, for this. Like, like again, like a lot of the content they release isn't divisive stuff. Is it? It isn't out there to like get people agitated or annoyed. No, but but the the association. What I'm saying is that the association will stick. Like oh, as yeah. in, okay, I I associate this with this particular situation. Like I only I've only seen that face at this particular time, and so right. every time I see that face. And, yeah, and I, my I name is next to it, about. then yeah. you know you, you're gonna get some of that flack. Like, oh, actually, like I in my mind, I'm like, oh, that's not a favorable face to have my brand next to. Mm. And so then I, I see why companies withdraw. Ugh, I don't. I really don't. Like, you know, it's like you can't. It's a way of trying to control her opinion. You know, oh, okay, I'm gonna withdraw. You know, it's the same thing. Like, yeah, whoever runs you, you. Why, yeah. If it's sponsorship, it's like, why should I give you money if you violate my but values? But it's not. It was just like, if anything, they did the favor by putting you on the podcast. You know, to talk about your brand. It's, I think the other um, kind of talking point was that they they had students from like Auckland Uni. So, like, again, when you're saying guilty by association, they had other people that wasn't of her message in that space as well so they're kind of attached to that yeah and there's people you know calling I mean? them out for not mm. calling Same her thing. out yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for these things and it's like i get it and this is see again it's this is the whole control their opinion you know what i mean Our these people cannot let someone have their own opinion you must have been associated with that you know what i mean but she has a public platform yeah <laughs> but that's it so so to, to get the 
or the Samoan Students Association are part of this by association is fucking pathetic. I mean, otherwise, well, you know, by proxy, this, we, we would be guilty oh, no, by association are, for yeah. certain things that you've said earlier. Absolutely, so. absolutely. I mean... And it shows that they think we're stupid, that you can't have your own mind, I can't have my own mind, you can't have and you can't have your own thoughts. That we're dumb enough just by sitting here, proximity, that you must like my opinion, you must like my opinion. And it's so stupid to see people telling the Salmon Associ- uh, Students Association that, oh, you're associated with that. Fuck, can't you see her head is over there and she's got <laughs> her own brain in her head? Do you see how our head's attached? Gosh, it's pathetic. And this is the level of stupidity that we're getting to, is that we can't even just let someone have their own opinion. Maybe. And we can't even let you go sit next to someone because... There might be a transfer of opinions where you join and link simply by sitting next to them. I mean, per, perhaps people aren't used to aren't used to seeing those opinions the, or like actually having a difference of opinion. Exactly, from, from people, people that look are not like us. used to having different opinions, and they don't like brown people having different opinions. People are putting pictures of her. Oh, she does stuff with the National Party. So, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Who said that we ought to be Labour started the dawn rage, you idiots? Hey, hey and don't forget the uh, politis- t- politicians that uh, force fed us KFC to get a shot. Absolutely, so, the Labour uh, ones, so, the green uh, ones, and it's like, oh, you can't, you can't associate yourself with something different. We must do this. We must follow the political party that dawn raided our our elders. It's mm-hmm. so stupid. Our people cannot handle different opinions. There must be associations. And if you sit next to somebody, you must be associated with them. We're going to shame you too. I guess uh, that's where the, uh, I'm guessing the the misguided approach to community or the definition of community yep, in this absolutely. case. Because it's just like community does not equal hive mind. And um, they do that, absolutely. And that's how they get us to everybody get a shot. Everybody do well, what the government says. Is, and this Hive is where, mentality. And this is where, you know, in our previous podcast where we talk about weaponizing weaponizing this, like weaponizing yes. groundness as a, as a whole. Um, you know, we, we don't have the luxury of being seen as individuals. Right. Which is why maybe perhaps the, that adds to the reaction here. Like, like as, Absolutely. As it adds to that. By the colonize. By colonize, I don't care if you're Afrikasi or full-blooded, you colonize if you fucking think we're all going to think the same. Oh, I'm 10%. So. Because don't forget colonizers, <laughs> don't forget colonizers eradicated us and then those they couldn't kill, they got us to assimilate. They wanted assimilation. They wanted us to value what Balangis value. They want us to join the hive, the white hive. We must all think the same. We must all accept capitalism. We must all think one mind because it's easy to control. And that's what they've dragged on now is that we must all think this one Polynesian mind. They can't handle anyone who thinks differently. Unfortunately, that's where the chip comes in. Well, we've got different denominations. We could start. (laughs) But it's just crazy. And just the bombing thing, like, um, I understand what she says. You know, the news will show something, Ukraine, oh, Ukraine are the goodies. And then we get people waving their Ukraine flags, changing their profile pictures to Ukraine, simply because the news told them they'll change their flag to Israel because the news keeps saying Hamas is bad and Hezbollah is bad. We don't know fuck all about the history, but yeah, let's wave our Israeli flags. Like, we are just led by the cult of news, mainstream news. And that's the cult. Cult and culture come from the same root word. And this is, this is. I understand the whole bombing thing is on. You, I'm offended, I'm offended. I mean, nah, you guys will always wave the flag of the whoever's yeah. bombing who, whoever the news will tell you to. Today, people are free Palestine, but they've so forgot about free West Papua. Right. And so you switch from thing to thing to thing. And like I, like I know a lot of people that are, are tied to you know, what's happening in the Middle East. So mm. by right... Yeah, man, go preach that stuff. Then you get the other people that are just jumping on, waving the flags for for everything else because it's the the hot thing to do. It's right. a shitty t- like it's a shitty take, but that's what's well, happening. I guess whether it's a hot thing to do or you know it's perceived as maybe the right thing to do, like as in you know I want to I want to be seen as part of that wow. part of that hive. Yeah, I, I want to be, be part, part of, of the part mainstream of news. You see part of that hive, but if you actually want to make a difference, jump on a plane. Yeah, bro. Go go fight. 
Like that's that's the take out. Like I see people like mm. on my stories like every day, dead child, dead child. Like I get it, it's shit. But we got so much stuff mm. like, happening in our backyard, and that's they, it. They forget it. So can you do everything at once? <laughs> I mean, like, honestly, like, like that's the thing. Like if you know if I'm gonna be outraged about something, it doesn't mean that I'm not outraged about something else, or does yeah. it? Like, like as in if I'm if I'm up in arms about uh, about uh, the treatment of of Palestinians. Does that equal? Does that equally mean that I'm not up in arms about those in West Papua? I don't know. I, I feel like there's a like. Lot can of you champion multiple things at once? Because then yeah. again, like this is where that that whole you know you can only be one thing, and you know that yeah. that whole that it's, whole toe the line it's, actually. It's oh, live you, you, it. It's you, live it. It's be about it, and that's the big take I got from what she said. Is like, um, don't forget your culture. Don't forget who you are, um, and be about it. That's that's what I got from that take, mm. you know. Don't don't be trying to fucking get into spaces and be about yourself or, yep. you know, which is cool if it's yeah. about yourself because you want to do something great for your people. That's fine. Like, don't forget our people. Don't forget our culture. That's what I I got from her. I think the the, um, I think it's more like minding your own business, mm. you know. So it's pretty much minding your own business, really. That kind of thinking that need to be put forward rather than <coughs> get into other people's business and not sorting out your backyard. Mm. Yeah, you can just sort yeah, out so your backyard. Sort of that, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand how the rhetoric stings, though, because that same rhetoric has been weaponized against against them or against us. I understand that. Yeah, well, you know how when something hurts, like, like, what I are you going to do about it? Yeah, what well, well that's the thing. It? Like, it, you know, the it, it poses then, you know, what are you going to do about it? And that's what but I got from her. Like, what are we going to do and, about And it? those people, you know, they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're venting basically how that rhetoric had been used against them. And then they, you know, then they add what they've done in society to help, you know, bring themselves up, which is awesome. Like, I think, like, some of those comments from people that are, you know, venting their outrage at, you know, especially, you know, saying that, you know, trying to gatekeep and things like that. But they're also, you know, you look at what they've done for, for their community or for their immediate family and stuff like that. And it's like, well, I can't take that away from you. Um, no one's you, trying to, bro. No one's trying to take away what you've done for you and your family. It's just stinging rhetoric. Just good on, Hannah. You know, you guys say your piece. Get it out there. You, you got some experiences you want to share? Share it. Fuck. We, we can handle it. Well, some of us can handle it. You know, and just be also, just be aware that, you know, fucking some people have different opinions. Some people don't vote for Labour. I don't fucking vote for Labour either. There, there are Samoans out there with different opinions. Chill the fuck out. Be patient. Sheesh. On a site. Gosh. That's and what your mum used to tell me. Yeah, oh, that's what it's all up there. used to tell us that. As a kid, man. But when I went to Samoa and lived there, it's massive. Like, yeah. they would always, hey, shh, they would always tell me that, yeah. you know, and man, it's a concept. It's a way of living. It's a solution. You know, our culture has these solutions of dealing with emotions, teaching us how to listen to our people and how to, and be prepared that people will say things that might upset you. It's okay to be upset. Give yourself time. Deal with it and untangle the net in the morning. Well, they've got, um, I think she's got thousands of views on those videos, but if anything, a good takeaway is, since you're on her page, talking her a lot, um, <laughs> jump on her other podcast because she's got some great ones. I recommend the one of Rizvan. Um, there's one of Western Guide. There's a couple of others as well. So there's there's a lot of other great content there to draw from. Right, yes. Um and if there's something that we need to be outraged by, it's about the oil spill in Samoa. Yo! Um, and so Yay. pivoting away, uh, the mayor has come out and, and finally addressed it um, and expresses the uncertainty of the <laughs> of it all. But um, I don't know. It's strange because I feel like, and I don't know it's because of all this things that's happened this week with, with Hannah and, and our community, but this seems to keep getting swept under the rig, bro, uh, under the... Um, the fresh, the fella. The, the fella or whatever. Under the ocean. <laughs> you know the buzzy yeah. thing was that um what was it that that the academic from Waikato came out and said like it's only like a hundred oh, meters yeah. of, of oil. It it all pan out and, and the reef always gets like hurt and, and whatever, it all, all regain itself. But that's not the point. The point is you guys left this mess here 
You guys are doing shit all about it. <laughs> who, who, what's the name of that person? That was uh, this Lin. Lee? Lin? Oh, what, Asian, is it? Chinese? No, no. What? Balangi. Balangi? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I they don't know out. fuck all about environment. Shit. Look at what they've done to this world. Shit. But um, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this? Also, um, it really sad. Yeah, F- Fear Mir came out and suspended. Like, there's going to be no more work done on it. Only a couple of investigations. So a couple of checks. But that's it, because Chogum is on. <laughs> ah, so yes. she su- suspended everything, and they're not going to do anything until Chogum is finished. And that's fu- that's messed up, bro. That is so bad. Meanwhile, the um, the locals are, are having meetings with government officials, with the High Commission. They um, are, are talking about the oil spill that's that's going all over the place. They want compensation. Um, New Zealand said they're going to do an independent investigation. And so they've come and said, how can this be independent when you're you're the ones who did the pollution and you're going to investigate yourselves? So they want the Samoan government to be a part of it, but the locals have come out like swinging and yeah. and, the, and the Samoan government has said, wait until after Chogum. <laughs> <laughs> they said, <laughs> <laughs> That's when you don't. <laughs> Yeah, Samoans are different though, man. Samoan. <laughs> That's why they have that concept. Because yeah. try to remind everyone because no one listens to it. What's the, um, <laughs> what's the percentage of Afakasis on that side of the <laughs> It's really um, sad, man. And like King Charles is staying like three kilometers down. So he's at Sinale. Oh, is he? Yeah. So, and Sinale is being affected by there. And I read that um, a lot of the tourist places around there have um, experienced a massive decrease in tourism, especially from local tourism. And that shit's real because my uh, kids were over there recently, and my sister was like, "There's, there's no way I'm taking these guys over there. You know, we're swimming on this side of the island. So usually in the weekend, everybody goes to the south side. Everyone goes um, west side." Yeah. yeah, everyone goes there. Everyone goes there, but apparently, like, all the locals... And the local tourism mar- market's massive because the locals are there. They're the ones who go to the beaches every day. Absolutely. You know, yeah, so... The food, the fish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they're your constant market, your consistent market. And they're just... They're not going to that part of the island. Understandably so. Yeah. And There's a, a local... This was an article published from ABC. Uh, Fatu Totua local fisherman and a Tafi Tuala village resident. And he, it's quoted here, for one day my son and I would earn 200 tala yeah. from the fish we would catch. Now we can't provide for our family because we depend on the sea. And so if you're living right there next to oil, 200 tala is massive as well, yeah. man. That's a lot. That's, that, that's a weekly. That's a lot. In that's a lot in Samoa. 50 tala is a lot in Samoa. Mm-hmm. And that's so sad. Now what? And that's why they want compensation. They want an apology. They want compensation. The New Zealand government, uh, what's it, Minister of Defence's Judith Collins, she said no. Um, and the locals got pissed off because she said, oh, it's just a trickle. You know, it's just a little bit of oil. And, but they want compensation. They want apology. Fuck yes. And it's really sad because the Samoan government is not, being, is not strongly supporting the locals. You know? Mm. Oh, we'll suspend this. Um, oh, there's no oil leak. Like, they're really, they're, it's like they're on the New Zealand side. It's crazy. Um, this could be an edit point, but did, did we want to talk about Chogum before we get into it? or Shall we? Yeah, we could talk about it a little bit, I guess. What what, what do you guys... What, what do you talk about? In oh, no, just to highlight the event, because I think there's a lot of people that don't know, don't know what's happening. The, well, Chogum is... How they com- the Aotearoa sign. Commonwealth heads... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting. Yes. Uh, it's the Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting is a bi what? Biannual yes, summit meeting of the government leaders from all Commonwealth nations, despite the name, the head of the state may be present in the meeting instead of the head of government, especially among semi uh presidential states. So like what is this? This is like just an event, a gathering of all the leaders to just talk about It's all happening. the Commonwealth leaders, so it's right. all the colonized countries. <laughs> It's, Wait, it's Britain's or? bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Chogum is a, is a meeting. It's happening next week, right? Yes. Yep. Massive. First time in the Pacific. Um, and yeah, it's, all, it's a Commonwealth, which is all the colonized countries, those that were settled or conquered by conquest. Yeah. Um, where Britain went and ran shit. And you, they, all the countries that pledge 
their allegiance, pledged their allegiance to. Um, they created all these afakasis. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hard out, and so it's it's the colonized, and they say, "Oh, we are all equal footing," but it's all equal footing under the crown. So yes, we are all equal, but we are all subordinate. We are all bitches of the crown. <laughs> wow. But that's that's how it is. Because if you're really about your independence, and fuck that. What so what is the purpose of this event? It's it's to it's what? to make sure you align your political policies with what the crown wants it to be. Right. That's the reality. That's the reality. Is that they're checking, making sure that everything is controllable. You know, they're gonna come and set the standard for climate change. They'll come and tell you what else. What else is on the agenda? Keeps it. It's pretty much trying to align the, the agenda 2035. Right. So these are the big agendas of control. Um, it's not just climate change. What's the other one? I mean, that might be a focus, but then there's like energy. Um, uh, and it could be preparation for the next pandemic that they're going on about in the news. So better wake up. You know, monkey so. Pop. Monkey they've, pop. They've, 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 yeah. Oh, monkey pops. No, but in the news, they've already started last night. Yeah, healthcare. Last night, they said, ah, oh, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. You know, and so, and in the papers a couple of days ago, they went on about the 11 year cycle of the solar tsunami that's going to wipe out all, all electricity next year. So, all these fucking agendas are getting ready. I don't know which one they're going to go with. Climate change is going to be a big one. Chogum Samoa 2024 aims to strengthen resilient democratic institutions that uphold human rights, democracies, and the rule of the law, a resilient environment to combat climate change, resilient econ- uh, economies that support recovery and prosperity, and resilient societies that empower people, especially women and youth, for a peaceful and productive life. Yeah, and, and the reason why you said resilient, because that's their motto eh, this year. One resilient common future, transforming our commonwealth. Mm. So the common future. So obviously the the colonizer has a, a future in mind, and everyone has to align their political and socioeconomic uh, policy to manifest What happens if someone just future. Goes, rocks up and goes, nah, we don't want to do that? <laughs> They won't. But what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Economic uh, hitmen. <laughs> oh, it just means war. Right. Really? Like it just means... Um, no, it'll be weather war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they'll send hurricanes, tsunamis, well, yeah, until you agree to their policies. Yeah, you're going to be like... Uh, they'll, they'll find ways to put you in debt. Oh, if not, they'll just come go. and occupy. Oh, I mean, that's already happened. Speaking of debt, that might be an issue... China, right? Because uh, right. China is in Samoa big time, but they're not part of the Commonwealth. That's right. It's quite funny though, but American Britain are in debt to China, so I don't know how that works. So is New Zealand. But yeah, Prevent you know bricks. they they won't tell you what the shit's really about. Mm. You know what I mean? So, but um, it's a big it's a big occasion. They've locked. They're gonna restrict some areas, even the um the the main part of town, like main parts in town, you will not be allowed to go. And it's just for Chogum. So um, the Navy, there's uh, 260 um, New Zealand Navy coming on that. Is it HMNS or HM, whatever oh, it is. the one they didn't sink? Canterbury. Yeah, so 200 done a sink, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was that after the event, that was that drill mining. Oh, well, yeah, it could be, yeah. Oh, so it's going to be outraged. So another 260, <laughs> they've got the Australian Navy there, the British Navy's there. I saw good with New Zealand board. Prince Charles is apparently scheduled to go to the Samuel's Botanical Gardens at their opening. It's going to be called the King's Gardens. Where, where's that? Where are they placing that? <laughs> I don't know, bro. Interesting. When, when I saw the King's Gardens, I was like, oh, gosh. Well, that's a, yeah, that's a big deal that's happening in Samuel right now. That happens, what, next week? So yeah. from October. Actually, this weekend it starts. So it starts today. So this is the 19th on a Saturday on a run for the whole week. Um, I'm assuming, though... Probably good for tourism as well. Absolutely. Like, um, they're expecting like about 6,000 people. That's me. In terms of dignitaries, media, yep. their entourages. So, yeah. And, and there was an issue about um, there might not be enough accommodation. I think they're staying on boats. Yep. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah they got they're some cruise boat. boats and stuff. Because I, I saw a local podcast and they were, they were pissed off. Um, Yoane, I saw his podcast and they were. 
No, no, I forgot his surname, but these guys are edgy, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, they were talking about the boats that a lot of the guests are staying on. Interesting. Well, that's that's the haps that's happening in, in real Samoa, guys. Yes. <laughs> Some things that we can get. Tell you, someone's going to be offended with that. <laughs> what, oh. so we're not real? Oh, no, <laughs> my career's over. It was over ages that's ago. violence, bro. It's lateral. <laughs> well, it's horizontal violence. Oh, duh. Uh, moving on to sports, uh, last night the Pacific Cup just kicked off um, a brutal game between uh, the Kangaroos and Tonga last night. I say brutal because obviously the Kangaroos won 18 0, but um, if you actually look at the end of the game and you look at the Australians, they look worse for wear. The, t- the Tongans just look tired. <laughs> but um, your thoughts on the game, bro? Nothing looks worse than the Al, bro. <laughs> so yeah, fair enough. So. Um, Bro, playmakers. Playmakers are so important. Uh, what's the young seven? Is it is it Katoa? Yeah, is that Katoa? You know, he. I don't think he's ever kicked long seven times in one game in the NRL, right? You, you know, um, kicking it dead. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And two kickoffs dead. Yeah. And giving them seven sets seven times, crazy. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's ever done that in the NRL. Like... He's very consistent. He's a very good player. And, you know, we got to start asking these questions. Why is it when it comes to the test match, bro, like so many yeah. bad plays? And he's not like that. Week in, week out with his NRL team, he never does that. First game for Tonga this year, man. I think the pressure maybe. Yeah, pressure what, you, what are you suggesting? Uh, that, well, no, what I'm saying, yeah, it no. could be. Is it pressure? Is it the, you know, they get... We get really emotional when we do the Sivatao and, yep. you know, that stuff. And I just I felt the Ford Pack gave them a pretty good platform. Absolutely. But they just made a few mistakes um, of their own. And at that level, it doesn't actually come down to how many line breaks you make in that. It comes down to how many mistakes you don't make. Mm. And that's it. Like that Australian team on paper was worse. Than, the Tonga team on paper was better than that Australian team yep. by far. I, I would agree. But that Australian team was picked to not make a mistake. And that's all it was, a defensive team. We're going to just run out our sets and let these guys make mistakes all the time. And unfortunately, the big mistake they kept making was the seven tackles. The kicking the ball dead and the seventh tackle. Because repeat sets is hard enough, but giving an extra tackle lengthening the set and letting them go into the 22 for a kick mm. seven times it's crazy man i i yeah i i picked them to win i genuinely thought they were gonna win um and then there's a bit of bias there because you know on paper they're the better team by far they had all the stars and so i thought they did well it's just a, a yeah the halves were weren't the best on that night um but that's that's probably one area where a lot of Pacific teams lack is maybe experience in those positions. Samoa, again, has had a similar situation with the exception of Luai, mm. <laughs> who's, who's been amazing for us. Um, but yeah, no, I, it's, there was some, some good kind of takes. I thought um, uh, Lehi Hopawate, mm. he's the, like, uh, the, the commentator made an interesting note in that he's the smallest of the Hopawatis, and I'm like, he might actually be one of the best ones because he's like young. Yeah, he played he very was, well, he very was safe. <clears throat> um, I thought the Ford pack was amazing. Um, Tomololo, mm. Olokowate, Olokowate, holy Tomololo, they look like the old Tomololo yeah. man. He he's so back, but again, at that level, it's who is not going to make a mistake, and that's it. Like some some, you know, when you play these Balangi teams, man, like England, like they just kick a corner. Do scrums well, do lineouts well, and they just wait for you to knock on. Do a yep. bomb, wait for you to knock on. Wait for you to give a penalty away. It's all they do, but they do it very well, very consistent for 80 minutes. And uh, the great thing is, is that the young half is only 20. He's a baby. And, yeah. you know, when you're young, it's massive emotional um, journey. And again, uh, Penrith Jr. Oh, is he? Yeah. So he'll learn from this. And, you know, emotion subsides. He'll learn that the emotion subsides. And at the end of the day, it's all about execution. you got to execute well. Uh, don't worry about the... Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes with playmakers, like you don't want your playmakers screaming. You want your playmakers to be chilled because you know that they're not in an emotional state. 
They're ready to uh, be calculated, deliberate, and execute. Yeah. Sometimes the emotional shit just uh, gives just that little extra push. He over, he his kickoffs were too long, his kicks were too long. Like there was too much in it, you know. So, which is great because peeling back is usually e- easier than having to do more. Mm. So he's young, he's twenty. He'll he'll learn from it. Yeah, and the exciting thing about that, like it's the Pacific Cup this year, but we've got the World Cup coming up. Mm. This year, so, uh, next year. Oh yeah, I believe. And oh so yeah, that's good for him, man. That's good for him because yep. you know, and for this team because there's still a lot of the forwards are in their prime. Mm. We talked about Tom Lolo as well. Um, nah, shout out to Tonga, shout out to the Kangaroos as well. The Pacific Cup will continue over the next two to three weeks, and we got Tor Samoa playing uh, next weekend as well. But uh, over in the Fijian team, uh, Jared Hain has made a return to the coaching staff. Oh, um, coaching staff. But there is kind of talk about him possibly returning to playing rugby league. In his late 30s. What are your thoughts on, on Jared Hain? Yeah, he's been out because of all the court stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how good he is now. Um, professional. He's got to have to do a lot to get his body in shape. Um, who knows, man? You see LeBron still going in 40 this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, who LeBron knows? had the benefit of having a $100 million career and having, like, yeah. the best health care well, yeah, but sometimes like not playing for ages does your body good. True, so, you know, he'll, he'll probably be like rearing to go. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I I never. One thing in sport, you never write off anyone. Coming back from um, like speaking of, you know, things that happen to a person's career and, and labels getting tossed about. Right, he got done over for uh, sexual assault. Um, and we talked about Hannah earlier about just having those lingering kind of factors. Mm. Like, what? Like, have you seen like circumstances where players kind of overcome particular things to kind of be out of that? I mean, probably the best example would be Muhammad Ali, who beat a lot in his in his life. But usually, those things kind of carry right mentally, or all that all that stuff that he was accused of. And, and yeah, yeah, but you know, there there are some dudes who have come from traumatic childhoods. Right. And women, you know, and you, like you don't know what journey anyone's been in, been through, but um, you know, it's uh, people are amazing, people are extraordinary, and uh, a lot of people don't realize how mm. strong they are and being able to overcome trauma or, like you said, um, media stigma and um, court cases and whatever. So, um, no, I haven't, to be honest. Haven't. Do you guys know any? Nah. <laughs> I mean, it's just interesting. I, he's He was one of the most electric uh, fullbacks in the NRL. Obviously went to the NFL, came back, continued to play. But when you look at a guy of his size, he's massive. He's like 6'3". Um, he's put on the beef, but I'm just like trying to figure out a way where he, like, has he moved to the forwards? Like, mm. I oh, don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think of that. Sticking with rugby league, though, um, here in New Zealand, we had uh, Sione Famuina. Uh, he organised the rugby league tournament in Otoroa, an event to support Māori and Pacifica men's mental health, um, which encompassed a lot of former great players, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a quote here in the article where he says, uh, when you go from making hundreds of thousands of dollars to $19 an hour, if you haven't planned or prepared for the transition, it's very, very hard. And this is coming from Sione Famuina, who um, had, a, had a lifelong career in the NRL and did a lot of amazing things there. Um, but you've talked about this a lot, bro, just that transition nowadays. Mm. And that's real, yeah. It, it does hit you hard. Even if, you like, uh, even if you've done well, you've in- invested well, you know, there's still a hit. And I think um, that should be talked about, not just, oh, I didn't invest well. Mm. Um, even for those who did invest well, like, it's a different life. It's a completely different life. And I think that needs to be spoken about a bit more. Is, um, and it's a adventurous, a fulfilling, a wonderful another life. You know what I mean? Um, but it's definitely a different life. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's nothing like the pros, and that should be told. And like, when you retire, you are going to literally start a new life. Everything is going to be totally different. And unless you were doing it before being a pro, then it's it's going to be completely new. And 
preparation is everything, but sometimes there are things you just can't prepare for anyway. It's going to be a shock. Like you have, if like you retire after like fifteen years, no matter how much you um, prepare, you don't know emotionally how that's going to impact you. You know, you, you can prepare financially, or you can prepare, um, have a job ready for you, or whatever. But emotionally, um, spiritually. And like I said before, like now you're doing a lot less training, so it affects your hormones and all of this other shit. Mm. Um, age, you know, when you're playing, you're in your 20s, and now you're in 35, you're in your 40s. Shit comes at you fast, yeah. you know? And um, that's why it's really good that they have these groups to talk about it. Because especially specific groups, you know, so he's got a group with his league friends who were all in that situation. Yeah. So they can all relate to the transition from that, from being a professional rugby league player into what whatever they're doing now. It's a specific, you know, he's got his group of professional uh, rugby players. So um, that's very important that uh, when you, if you are feeling like it's very hard that you have that group of people. And men are different as well. Like I think it's it's good that more men are talking about shit like this now. You know, obviously we had the whole still going like the the feminist movement and all of that stuff. Um, men ain't shit movement. You know, <laughs> there's there's all of that stuff. So fuck all that woke stuff. So I think it's great that uh, these men um, are realizing the position that they're in and they're being real about and accepting their vulnerability you know their weakness and they're accepting how they feel and they're working together to overcome it together and i think that's great and um more of that should happen and not just for professional rugby players but in life i yeah. see i see some of the the, the polynesian men pacific men have started up fathers of autistic children polynesian fathers of autistic children mm. and they've just done this themselves and they meet at oh i forgot his name and they meet at his house and have a barbecue and talk about their experiences share their experiences bring their children along and that's important because pacific fathers are so important you know having good strong male role models in the family is very important and it's very important that you realize that it's okay to be vulnerable, to share your vulnerability. And if you don't want to show your vulnerability to your family, I think that's okay too. You know, but I think it's important that you understand that you can share that so it's not, it's, you don't feel massively vulnerable and isolated. You don't have to be vulnerable and isolated. We can be vulnerable together and we'll fucking work this shit out together. And I think that's awesome. And I think more uh, men can grow their groups like this um, look, women don't get fucking offended by this. If you want to join, join. I'm sure men don't have a problem. But uh, it's just good to see that men are accepting that they have times of vulnerability or they are in vulnerable positions. And like we can share happiness, we can also share the burden of pain and um, help each other, uplift each other. Because life is long, man. Even though we say life is short, but it's actually the longest thing we'll ever do in life is our life. You know, so... Um, don't be afraid to reach out and it's good to see these yeah. guys starting their group just on top of that man yeah it's <laughs> I'll wear this but sometimes men need other men's opinion opinions right absolutely uh, sometimes when you're vulnerable to women they can use it against you absolutely and I've and I'm speaking from experience alright so don't absolutely all, don't start barking but sometimes they save it yeah Yep. They bank oh, it. wait till you <laughs> remember three months ago, three hundred days and two twenty six minutes and and then so they bring it up and, and you know, they talk about stoicism and, and, and operating like that. And I think for the past couple of years there's been all these kind of functionalities to kind of bring those walls down. But as a man, like when you bring those down and you open yourself up to the to the other to the other half, uh, sometimes they don't understand. And that's okay. Especially now with the whole woke movement and um, trying to trying to turn men into something, <laughs> just a whole anti-man, anti-fathers. 
uh, mainstream type thing, you know? What is a man? <laughs> like, Firstly, what has that man done for Samoa? <laughs> but I mean, it's it's important. And like you said, like, some t- oh man. Yeah. We might get people complaining about this. No, we won't. We're this. Safe. Don't worry, don't worry. Shout out to um, Sione Famuina. Um, this yeah. is an annual series that he wants to create. So they'll be playing this in different parts of, of New Zealand, I believe, and then possibly Australia as well. Mm. Even England. Uh, there's a lot of um, great athletes around the world. That need they need these kind of safe spaces to, you know, live from. And and it helps us be better men for our families, be better husbands to our wives, to be better fathers to our children. Okay, it's not about men just being men and you know, it's we're trying to be better providers, better protectors, and better for our families. So it's not about trying to separate us from from the women in our lives. Absolutely not. It's trying to make us be better men for the women in our lives. Well, in our uh, last story, um, speaking of retired uh, athletes, one of the greats, David Tua, is returning to Samoa. Uh, he spoke to Radio New Zealand. So I just want to quote Fale what he you. said. I just want to quote what he said. He goes, me and my beautiful wife were in Samoa about three months ago, uh, straight after her father passed. So we decided to take a week before she went back to work. And while I was enjoying the scenery, sun, and my training, I asked her, hey, darling, would you like to move back to Samoa to live? Uh, and then the following comment is, we've been the breadwinners for our families, so respectfully, I believe it's time for us to do something for ourselves. Um, but I believe it's more than that. I believe Samoa is calling three more weeks and we move. I can't wait if if oh, it's three weeks too long. Right. Um, so congrats to David Tua awesome. and his uh, wife, Helen, uh, moving to Samoa. But man, what a... What a uh, an icon, an icon that that's done so much, mm. not just for Samoa but for New Zealand and the yes. Pacific. Absolutely. Your thoughts on this move, bro? It's a ma- it's a massive thing that's happening. A lot of Samoan people are moving back to the islands. Mm. Heaps of them, you know, especially the older generation. They've a lot of people who were born and raised in Samoa moving back because that's their home. But a lot of this generation that's maybe born in New Zealand, um, Digby, for example, yep. you know. And like what happens, what, um, David Tour, like you go on holiday, you got your sun, you got your organic food, tropical climate, beaches, and then you're sitting there like, what? Why don't I just fucking move here? You know, and this is like everything, and it's happening. It's massive. There's so many people uh, heading back to Samoa now, um, which means that there's obviously the freehold land prices have gone up. Um, and this is the thing that there are some things though that you must learn before you go. On a side man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it doesn't like, yes, I get beaches every day. Now, if you don't have a piece of freehold and you're pl- that means you're going to go back to your village, then you might have a lot of problems because that means you come under the village council and they will dictate to you the rules and you must abide by those rules. Otherwise, he's gonna, he's gonna say what's a David tour? <laughs> yeah, but but that's how, bro. <laughs> they got they got their own David tours too, bro. Yeah, yeah that's true. You know, and um, like I uh, we did a case. I don't want to mention the village, but uh, the village council ordered this guy to be killed because he had his own opinion, didn't want it, so they shot him, killed him in the nineties. Like it's not even that long ago. So village law is a real thing. Yeah, village laws is a real thing. Remember during the the measles. The uh, Prime Minister, they asked the Prime Minister, is there any problem? And he said, yes, we had two mothers uh, who didn't want their kids to get it. Uh, one had seven kids, one had five or something. But don't worry, we got the village council on her and we made her do it. Okay? So it's shit like that. So the number one thing that I would advise anybody who wants to move back to Samoa is make sure you have a piece of freehold land. You have to have your own land. I bought my own lands okay five acres two no, no, acres no, 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 and don't bother another. just learn the hard way no learn learn, learn the ways because like you said people are on different levels of understanding yeah. you don't want to go and live under a council that has completely different levels of understanding and you're like whoa, 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 hold on do i get a say in this shut up like shit like remember there are some villages where women are not allowed to be matai yeah and if you're not allowed to be matai you're not allowed to run for uh parliament okay so it's very important. The number one thing is make sure you have a piece of freehold land. 
If you're going to go live in Samoa, live on your freehold land because freehold yeah. is you, no one, that's your land. That's not village land. No one can build on it. The thing about village land is, though, you can go build wherever you want in your in your village. Anyway, this is my plot. Obviously, it has to go through the council first, yeah. uh, the village council, but that's how it goes pretty much anywhere you can build. Um, but I would advise if you want your freedom, and believe me, we... Uh, those who have lived overseas, you will have a different level of understanding things. I'm not saying better or worse, but you will see things differently. It must have a piece of freehold land yeah. for yourself. So don't, don't go and be a fear poco because yeah. um, learn the ways. Now, you, know, you, you can you still gonna... learn the ways. <laughs> and, and this is where the monotanga comes in. You know, you get a spare 50, pop over to your village, give it to your council. Just something like that. Or, or, or you get uh, you have your umu on on Sunday, a lot of food. We got too much. Pop over to your village, drop it off. Just little things like that that we can do. That um, Hannah was on about. What do you do for your village? It doesn't have to be. Oh, I bought five thousand, ten thousand dollars, and I oh praise your village. Just little things where you pop over and bring a cake. So, you know, and David Tour is is someone's very good. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. he's someone born right. Someone yeah, born course, and raised. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll be fine with all of that. So he's got his own billboard on his village. Yeah, Fali <laughs> the, the most famous like, David to his village. Hey, you leave the airport. Yeah, yeah you, you leave David the airport and, village. Yeah, <laughs> just so, so everyone yeah. knows. And he might even become part of the village council anyway. Yeah. I'd I'd put him in. You know, yeah. if, if David Tour came back, I would love to have. Good thing about Samoa, it's not one person rule. It's a council. Yeah. But enforced and by his left hook. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <like that. laughs> and you know what he's going to do, because this is what I did, and this is what um, um, Mahonri did, and I know there's dramas, but, you know, is he will go back and start an academy. I know he will. He'll do a boxing. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll do a ring. He, he will get it going in Samoa. And he'll get it going right. The only other person who did it was um, Vanga Tungamala. He, he had his own boxing ring there. And he had the... That was the only boxing ring, I think, in Upolu. Maybe there might have been one out in Kwa, but yeah. every, everyone in Apia would go to um, Vainga Tungamalas. I would not be surprised if that becomes like an international... Absolutely. Like, like academy, like as in, I mean, you know, he is yeah. one of the best. And that's a great thing. Like, um, sometimes people will move because they see they're needed, you know, and he's, he's definitely needed over there. And with his wealth of knowledge and his abundance of wisdom, man... And that's a great thing. Like, I went over there and did clinics, and there's no, like, you need a permit for this. You know, there's no fucking rules and regulations. Over there, the energy will start flowing. Oh. In combat sports, too, there is um, Derek Sua, who represented Samoan Judo. Mm. He doesn't have a boxing ring, but I know he's got a Judo. He's got the mats and stuff. Mm. And uh, Ben Percival, as well, who represented Samoa, he's um, gone to Japan to bring back some people but he's building a dojo over there for a lot of young guys to practice MMA yes. uh, so maintenance yeah. is big though you know yeah. you build a dojo you gotta have someone there you, you, you trust Yeah, like trust trust because things get destroyed very easily in Samoa playgrounds hey, man what insurance <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, and that's get, the other thing get the right builder yes the right builders, the right man, builders for a, I did 70 grand for a, a shack <laughs> And like, yeah, you got to get the right builders. You got to be there. Well, come off your um, own builder because that's what a lot of my cousins have done. They just bought our cousins that work as builders. That's the one. Yeah, all those yeah. Uh, prefabs. <laughs> Might yeah. have 10 ones. Um, and understand that the resources are not readily available over there. So be patient. You got to be really patient. But, get your um, box, chuck it on the on the ship, ship it over. Absolutely. And it's awesome. It's exciting. It's great yeah. that he's going over because... You know, we get a lot of money in that sent over, but we seldom ever get ideas. Experience. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Experience and wisdom. Yep. And he is Olympian. He is multimillionaire. And also the wisdom of, I don't want to say failure, but the wisdom of like... Just overcoming. Yeah, over, yeah, yeah like adversity. losing it all yeah. and then rebuilding. Like he... I mean, that is wisdom, isn't it? That's wisdom, bro. You know, when we make mistakes and then yeah. we learn from our mistakes. So... It's it's really cool, and it'll be really interesting to see how it goes. Sometimes yeah. things don't work out that well, but man, I he could maybe do a, a reality TV show with um, 
TV One over there, you know, instead of them playing Filipino and Chinese soaps, <laughs> and they do it all the time, you know, like start following around David Tua for, for, for a season and see how that goes, you know. He's got so many options over there, um, and he had so many options over here too. But I love that he's he's bringing that energy back to Samoa. Um, he's done, yeah, like I was saying before, just done so much. So even if he doesn't want to like do that. He's he's more than worthy of just doing his own thing and just chilling. And Absolutely, it reminds me of Have you seen Avengers Endgame when uh, Thanos snaps the world and he just goes to his plantation? Yeah, and, and just yeah, and just chills. He's like, I've done my work. David Tua's done his work, man. Yes, he's done his work for a lot. Even of his people. presence would be uplifting. You see him at the shops. Oh, uh, it's awesome. It's really cool, and uh, I hope more people see that. Like Samuel's beautiful, and. Regardless of how you feel about yourself and your identity, <laughs> Samoa's there for you, man. And it, it's it's there. It'll give you what you give to Samoa. You know, if you want to go over there and be an eat ass, and you're going to get that back. But, you know, you accept well, whatever position you are in. You just accept yourself. Go over there with a good heart, and you'll get that shit back. And just on that note, too, um, shout out to Tony Laulu, uh, Savai Boys. Um, mm. I don't know if I should say this, but he's planning on, on moving back to Samoa. He wants right. to start doing some stuff in Savai. He wants to do work on the tourism. We've had some talks. So we're trying to work on a few things, but he taps into the podcast. So shout out to him. But again, this is a 36-year-old Samoan man who wants to move back to Samoa, take his kids, and he wants to help grow Samoa. Mm. And he loves being in Samoa. Um, and, and he's on a similar journey to a lot of New Zealand-born Samoans yes. trying to reconnect. Um, and he will attest to the fact that if you throw yourself in, they yes. will they will jump onto you and help you. Yes, but make sure tell them get some freehold. <laughs> <He's>, yeah, <laughs> but that's that. That is us for another episode of the Offside Show. We'll see you next week. Wow, boys. Wow.